Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow, and this video is likely going to be a bit of a long one. And I want to preface everything by saying that this video is not meant to be political. This video is not meant to uh, support or oppose any political party. It is primarily meant to open the eyes of the few who are struggling with putting things together and, and establishing an understanding of what may very well be going on on a global scale right now and has been uh, for quite some time. Every section of this video is for a very specific purpose. It is to hopefully pull you away from the very narrow focus that so many of us have on either side and, and instead broaden our perspective into the grander picture, okay? And I'm gonna be reading a lot, I'm gonna be showing a lot of things, it's gonna get a little crazy, bear with me, I encourage you to watch this to the end and 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 share your thoughts. I feel like I'm personally taking a bit of a risk with this video because it's not what I typically do, but I have been sitting around watching silently for so long and I feel like if I see what is going on, I should at least try to help others understand it. Make your own opinions. Feel however you're going to feel, but at least have an open enough mind to accept that whatever, whatever narrative or perception you have on the world around you today may not be all there is to it. And that's all I ask. Now, this here is my friend Thomas. Um, well, he's not my friend, actually. He is um, he's a, a despicable human being. And we're going to go over some details about this gentleman. Um, he's a wealthy man with a history of doing terrible things, which I'll break down uh, but a few of those. A man that won the lottery at a young age and has used his easily found wealth to build a reputation for being quite the greedy little man. Thomas doesn't like our kind. No. He hates anyone that is not wealthy like him. I'm going to show you everything wrong with Thomas in every detail so you can be the judge for yourself. Thomas hates cats, dogs, and any animal. Often seen picking up stray animals and tossing them into the back of a dirty old truck, probably to euthanize them. How could anyone dare do such a thing? Thomas has a huge nose. Look at that thing. It makes his face look so mean and distorted, which is appropriate for someone so vile. He's disgusting, right? Thomas is overweight and he takes pride in it. He is a glutton, constantly dining on food you and I could never afford. How can someone eat so much when so many people are starving all over the world? The selfish, self-indulgence of such a disgusting person. Thomas is a horrible businessman that loves to take advantage of the poor in any way he can, often causing people to lose everything if it means he can make a few extra dollars. There are even videos of him laughing at people as he forces them to leave their homes. Here's my problem with this scum of the earth. I am trying to buy a building that I plan to use to build a thriving business for the less fortunate, a place to hang out, have fun, and enjoy life. But Thomas won't sell it to me. What does this insane, greedy man think he's doing? Who does he think he is? Would you be willing to sign this petition to get this piece of garbage out of my way? That is the narrative. Now for the truth. Thomas and the stray animals. He actually walks the streets picking up stray animals and helps animal protection crews load them into their vehicles to get them fed, appropriate shots, and other needed treatments to help them. He's not euthanizing them. His nose was broken playing softball in the military where he was serving our country. Catching a flying ball against the sun can be tricky. As for him being overweight, well, he's actually a diabetic that eats once per day on a very restricted diet, 
but the medications he's on causes him to gain weight uncontrollably and has nothing to do with his eating habits. He actually donates a percentage of the revenue he generates in business to the building of homes for the less fortunate and shoots feel-good videos of him surprising families as he breaks the news and ushers them away from their old home into their new home. I am trying to buy, now I, I, as the writer of this, the focus of this whole thing is that I'm trying to buy a property to open a new street pharmacy where people can go and buy whatever they want and enjoy them right there in the safety of a single property. I can make millions, but I have to sway the public opinion to hate Thomas so that they will sign the petition and get me my new property. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what the media does to us ever since President Obama signed legislation in 2013 that changed the U.S. Information and Education Exchange Act of 1948, also known as the smith munt Modernization National Defense Authorization Act for the fiscal year of 2013, which made it more acceptable, a more acceptable practice by easing some of the restrictions so that media produced by the U.S. Agency for Global Media and intended for foreign audiences could be distributed domestically upon request, according to its text. Prior to its passage, the content was banned from being disseminated, disseminated in America. This obviously opened up a can of worms in the U.S. for blatant propaganda, and if you try to Google this, you'll see a lot of quote-unquote fact-checkers that quote various questions such as Obama signed a law in 2012 allowing propaganda in the U.S. The fact checkers will of course say false. That's because this didn't happen in 2012. This was in 2013, first of all. But there you have it. Most people walk away thinking it's nonsense because the fact checker flat out said false without diving deeper into what the reality of the details are. Obama signed a law in 2012 allowing propaganda into the U.S. False. However, reading further, you'll see that it was signed in 2013, not 2012. And it was a specific act that was changed, ultimately affecting the meaning of something else. A bit confusing, but ultimately, the overall claim is true. And this is a problem that we have so many issues with because the lazy quickly go and they navigate headlines to basically establish their perception of all reality without diving deeper, where often the truth hides all the way at the bottom in some form, some degree. But it's often ignored by the people because we don't have time to read two pages of an article that are basically saying in detail what we believe is in the headline already. And it's made us lazy. But the reality is, is that so many of these fact checkers all over the internet are also playing for the same teams that are putting out the false information to begin with and often have creative ways of diverting your attention elsewhere. The fact is both sides of the political fence play their roles to move the overall agenda forward, which is ultimately one of growing control over the people. While today the conservatives are lashing out at liberal lefties, it wasn't that long ago that the Patriot Act, which was seemingly waiting on someone's desk to sign just days after 9-11 occurred, that also stripped a multitude of freedoms from the citizens in the name of national security, and that was when the right had control. As the pendulum swings back and forth, we are constantly being diverted from the walls closing in on us while being pushed to look at elsewhere as emotional triggers are set in place to maintain our conviction of things that matter to us and inspire further division topics such as gun rights or abortion and others being hotbeds of emotional engagement known to maintain a division in this country as narratives narratives related to both are constantly used to stir up angst fear and frustration among the people when an easy middle ground could be well established for the benefit of us all. But we won't do that because we need these key trigger points. A handful of powerful people cannot control the masses alone, but convince a portion of the populace to hate the other and you multiply the strength of your army. 
In our current situation, we have what appears to be the end of an era in global dominance, and we are working towards adopting a global agenda over a sovereign one. Countries that operate on a more socialist dictatorship or even a technocratic system are looked at as more efficient by those that don't. It was Republican George Bush Jr. that said in so many words, if this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> Just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs> Looking at a country like Canada, where Justin Trudeau came to power in 2015 as leader of the Liberal Party, and what outlets such as Wikipedia failed to disclose as a well-regarded member of the World Economic Forum, after searching the entirety of his Wikipedia page, there is no mention of his involvement in the World Economic Forum. However, in this older video, you'll, you'll clearly see Klaus Schwab discussing Trudeau's involvement. Yes, um, actually, this is... Um notion to integrate young leaders uh, is part of the World Economic Forum since many years. And I have to say, um, when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin, and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brez of uh, Argentina, and so on. And there are many more modern videos of Klaus congratulating Justin on his duties being performed admirably. This video is not about politics, even though I know you probably believe it is but a simple breakdown on, breakdown on how we are ultimately controlled to think and believe a certain way by a handful of people that happen to own all of the national and local media outlets from TV news to print media across the country. If you owned a property that you built by also own, owning all of the local media outlets that helped you promote it, what would you do with someone that moved into your market and began showing the people all of the little white lies in your marketing for years that could ultimately lead to your company closing down? If your employees did really well financially, what might they do to help you fight that person? What if I told you that regardless of who you were or what side of the political aisle you were on, you are in fact the enemy of those controlling it all? and that only your complete obedience is acceptable. Elon Musk, a billionaire once touted as one of the great minds alive today and the inspiration of many, fueled by government subsidies for the company Tesla and the agenda related to ridding the world of fossil fuels, decides to buy Twitter in the name of protecting free speech and fight blatant censorship only to become the black sheep of American politics and suddenly demonized by left-wing politicians and media complete with a lower ESG score than a tobacco company. This is what happens when you bite the hand that feeds in the name of what is right for the country and its people. Those in power want you to be poor, docile, and afraid, always awaiting your next emotion to be fed to you through the media. Even secret societies throughout the world hide true meanings of things under layers of confusing symbols and allegory, which is, are only discovered by true seekers with enough intelligence and determination to be rewarded with the truth. You are a consumer ignorant and lazy and simply do not deserve the American dream. You have the right to pursue it, but you'll only achieve it if you play by the rules of those that rose before you and play your role in keeping the machine turning in favor of the few against the many. For them, the only true way to establish wealth is when they allow you to. This is where the fight between cryptocurrency and traditional finance come into play. We see banks being pushed to consolidate into one another as narratives of failing banks and consumer bank runs being the catalyst. But why would there be bank runs capable of causing particular banks to implode without the media saying they might, and why? On March 15th of 2020, they reduced the required bank reserves of consumer deposits to 0%. That means that banks can take a deposit from you and loan out 100% of it, ultimately multiple times, tying up your capital and making it more difficult for you to withdraw. 
dropped the reserve requirement to zero, then sparked fear into the public about banks potentially imploding and everyone maybe losing their life savings while targeting crypto-friendly banks in favor of those towing the anti-crypto line. Add to that a Biden-appointed SEC chair that once supported crypto as seen in his MIT lectures and more. So we already know in the U.S. and in many other jurisdictions that three quarters of the market are not what would be called securities, even in the U.S., Canada and Taiwan, the three jurisdictions that follow something similar to the Howey test that we've talked about. Three quarters of the market is, is non-securities. It's just a commodity, a cash crypto. Only to about face and call them all securities, while to this day not offer anything but confusing statements about what and what is and isn't a security, all while late losing major court batters, battles, inspiring even Congress to be, begin coming down on him for his intentional disruption of U.S. technical innovation and financial progress in favor of his supposed banking relationships. Why are all these things happening as an extension and or effort of left-wing politics? They're all connected to left-wing politics some way, shape, or form. What is the end goal? JP Morgan once threatening to fire any employee with Bitcoin in, their, in a personal wallet, all while building a new crypto trading desk in secret to then reveal it in a newfound support of cryptocurrency. Go figure. And yet they're still putting out notices at Chase, Chase Bank saying, if you try to use our banking institutions to trade crypto, we're going to make you go somewhere else. Why is that? Consolidation, control, obedience. Cryptocurrency is an enemy of any nation controlled by those fed from the pockets of international banking outfits and corporate interests. We can, look, we can look at the numbers to tell us what is more powerful today and why those in power want us out of it. Looking at Bitcoin on annual candles and the U.S. dollar in the same way, and you can see which is outperforming the other, regardless of the ups and downs, and the wealthiest of them all know this, and it's why they are continuing to accumulate. With decentralized finance, though still new and, as Gary Gensler says, still wrought with fraud and corruption, the problem, in my opinion, isn't that fraud can run rampant in crypto the same way it does in every financial vertical already, but that the decentralized nature of it doesn't exactly bode well for the regulatory bodies looking to capitalize on it the way they do with institu institutional banking groups and the major fines associated with their ongoing wrongdoing. At the same time, DeFi eliminates the middlemen that take fees while tying up funds for days or even weeks for anything from transfers to transactions. Whereas DeFi protocols have limited fees primarily for blockchain confirmations and that happens instantly. Further, having systems as transparent as decentralized blockchain taking over finance means pulling the curtain away from those currently running our systems into the ground to benefit the handful pulling the strings in favor of systems where every transaction can be traced easily. They don't want that. They don't want us to know exactly where money is flowing from one point to another. They want to be able to keep that all veiled in secrecy. They only want to know what we are doing with our money. They want to be able to control what we are doing. But even the banking institutions and, and I'm sure even big corporations, they don't want that transparency of any kind. Maybe there are some security risks in some of that, but that's not all there is to it. There are security risks in our assets being traced all over the place for the purposes of tax and anti-money laundering, regardless of what we're doing it with it. Whether it's buying a candy bar or a steak dinner, it doesn't matter. There's always a motive behind wanting to know what we're doing with our money, and it's not all the way they, they play it out to be. This is why the institutions prefer building and utilizing their own centralized digital currencies, with only them holding the keys to the data and the flow overall. Utopian outrage that is now all of China apparently is I once again cannot buy food. A couple days ago my uncle and my cousin helped me get a cell phone that is linked to a Chinese bank card so that I could buy anything. But now apparently it has been flagged for some reason 
and I have to pass facial recognition identity verification, which is insane because all I want to do is just spend my gift card balance on this debit card. I can't believe I'm doing this. I have to open my mouth. Oh my god. Terrifying. Oh. And of course, because it was my cousin who set this up for me, I did not pass certification. I guess it's a good thing that the Chinese app is not racist. But now, I once again can't buy anything. The terms New World Order were once just a conspiracy of those triggered by the first time former president, George Bush Sr., uttering them in a speech, but have since been associated with the agenda and global reach of the World Economic Forum, which to this day, many still don't even know exists. Often shrouded in altruistic values and goals, much like we saw with Sam Bankman Freed and FTX scandal, which ultimately acted as a political contribution funnel for the liberal left, the World Economic Forum is a very interesting slogan of, you'll own nothing and be happy. While insisting the world will be eating cricket powder, not own a vehicle or a home, nor have any privacy by 2030, and will still be happy about it. We see it all unfolding now, as things like the pandemic are used to quickly usher in many of the mechanisms by which the aforementioned goals will be brought about. As property values rose and interest rates began to skyrocket, keeping many out of being able to purchase a new home, they are forced to rent homes previously built and or bought by one of the three controlling interests in every major company in the country, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street. Electric vehicles are being manufactured by almost every major car company in the U.S. and abroad, but are growing ever more expensive. And on top of all that, the cost of charging them can be as much as the cost of fuel in some vehicles. This, like the housing market, is ultimately driving up the cost to not only own a house, but a vehicle, meaning you'll rent your house and call an Uber, which will eventually send you an autonomous EV transport to you. Even more, the adoption of the 15-minute cities that will certainly be sprouting up soon will make it so that you will live within the confines of your 15-minute city. And if you want to explore outside of that area, you'll likely need a higher social credit score and or ESG score to merit the privilege, while also using the centralized CBDC currency so they know what you buy, how often, and if they feel you enjoyed a steak dinner one too many times that week and contributed to the demise of the ozone through supporting cattle belches and the like, your scores will drop, funds limited, and access outside of your city will be restricted. Now, I understand that some people don't eat meat, are vegan. I know that some people out there very much can live a life that is well in line with the liberal perspective or the liberal expectations of society. And right now, they feel they are winning. Right now, they look at the way the world is changing supposedly in their favor, and they look beyond so many of the things that are taking place to maintain a certain number of new restrictions and limitations and so forth and so on. And right now, while they think that they're winning, ultimately their freedoms and liberties are also being restricted. And they're being restricted by means of new methods of restricting those freedoms and liberties, which will in fact ultimately be used against them, against things that they do care about in the future as the pendulum swings back and forth. That is something that I feel not enough people keep in mind in the current climate. While I know some of this may all sound like paranoid delusion, I would agree if, it, if I weren't seeing it all transpire before our very eyes. While some may love the idea of everything I just listed, it's generally the academics that have been indoctrinated through school and the present day and or those with meager hourly jobs begging for a leg up in life eager to adopt a more socialist society with which they can not thrive but survive while living what they consider to be their best life of not doing much 
but having an opinion on all things and nothing to lose if they're wrong. We're seeing that everywhere. Cryptocurrencies complicate the grand agenda by putting power into the hands of those that are willing to learn, and the early adopters are rewarded with the benefits of not only financial sovereignty, but the new doors being opened that those controlling the narrative prefer to remain closed. While it pains me to have to pick on the liberal left and Democrats in this video, I can't ignore the truth as it plays out in front of me today. Far too many people simply accept the narratives as they are being delivered to them in a constant stream of headlines and heavily leading articles while reinforced by paid talking heads on TV. And it's all inspiring, if not scary, when you have the ability to zoom out and away from what everyone is being trained to focus on in favor of the larger picture and how it all connects. The people playing specific roles and pushing things forward and how it ultimately affects everyone. As I've said, I am not on the right or the left, and I simply look at the right as controlled opposi opposition to a grander force. Our way of life as we know it is numbered regardless, one way or another, and the idea that you'll take your assets and leave to somewhere else to avoid the chaos is but another illusion, as this is a global agenda, and its first adopters have shown who they are during the pandemic. However, the World Economic Forum is a growing army of young aspiring leaders that will eventually be placed all over the world to push things along in their neck of the woods and no location will be out of reach. I've always said that politics is merely a play for the public to give the illusion of choice and it was until recently. Anyone standing in the way of the corruption eager to grow and move forward will be dealt with as the pockets of corporations and special interests continue pumping out money out of the people they are further enslaving as we are forced to work multiple jobs just to be able to eat and hopefully cover our bills, which are also growing. Look at the amount of money being poured into political campaigns recently and ask yourself, why are billions of dollars being pumped into a presidential candidate just for them to make $400,000 a year? How is what that person's doing benefiting the people? Every ad, article, speech, and interview, a carefully constructed piece of art meant to demonize opponents, uplift the candidate, most prepared to serve the special interests while uttering words that earn your trust. Everything from thumb pointing to carefully crafted hair, being in an effort to connect with you while never being offensive. That's the way things used to be. It's all a play conducted by staffs of people that study everything about you and know what you want to hear, how you want it said, and how to convince you that their opponents are bad. In a system where the corporations, big pharma, and even other countries have a significant vested interest in maintaining their position, and it established a chain of action, all meant to anger, frustrate, and restrict you. I'm so exhausted even reading these words anymore. Corporations put $5 billion in a campaign contributions for a president they know will work for them through policy changes and the like. They then pump billions of dollars worth of marketing into media outlets across the country, which keeps the media loyal to their message. Their candidates get elected, goes to work and makes changes in office that generate billions of dollars in revenue for the corporations that are then supported by the media that it's already paid for, if not directly owned by the same companies. While you, the taxpayer, is emotionally focused on one or two trigger topics being used to manipulate your loyalty as you're being bled out through more taxes, less freedoms, and more dramatic efforts of the aforementioned to main the, maintain their control of it all. Anyone standing in the way of that will be silenced, demonized, or worse. For any of you young people, out, young people out there seeing all of this, thinking it doesn't matter, you're following the guidance of your favorite celeb or the girl you're trying to get to notice you, remember, you, you're putting your faith in someone that makes a living from making the public believe they are something they aren't while trying to submit to the winds of a woman off being taught to hate you by everything she sees. 1984 is already here and we have a small window to at least establish ourselves and our families. And now is the time to stop staring and screaming at the door handle and realizing it's there to open 
a pathway out of the cell being built around us. I know that through political division, we're all being pushed against each other for one reason or another, often replete with, as I've said, a variety of different emotional triggers that keep us at odds with each other. And while the left nor the right is innocent, really on any end of the spectrum, we are all victims of a system that is meant to ultimately enslave us by increasing the number of fees that we're forced to pay in lieu of maybe new taxes that are a little more apparent to the public. We're, we're constantly being bombarded with new ways to give the government our money while the government continues working on ways to force additional spending on, whether it's illegal immigrants or new new programs or, or whatever it is that basically demand more of our money to the point where they want us ultimately living off of them. They want us constantly looking to them for answers, for food, for guidance, for whatever it is that we think we need. They want us to give up our sovereignty and they want us to give up our, our way of life, our freedoms, our liberties. They don't want us to be able to say and or do anything. They want us to just be obedient. And they're using both sides to achieve these goals year after year, year, cycle after cycle. And so few are seeing it. And it scares me. It genuinely scares me. For all I know, this very video could be flagged for any number of reasons that make little sense other than to say, I might have an opinion that varies and is different than the narrative they're trying to constantly project onto the people. I personally don't know what to do anymore other than continue my my role in cryptocurrency and try to educate people as to what this stuff is, what it means, how it could benefit you, how it could potentially change your life and empower you to make decisions not out of desperation, but from a position of power um, and security for yourself and your family. Because it's often people that are in desperate times make desperate decisions to feed themselves or their families or to ultimately succumb to the forces that are above them barking down orders. I hope everyone read, reads this, sees this video and gives it true thought. I know I don't read things very fast, especially the more I read, I can feel my head pumping full of blood. I can, I feel a little lightheaded, honestly. Um, I just, I, I, I felt like I needed to record this and, and put some, some data to it in hopes that it might open just even a few more eyes to what's going on around us because we're all being snowed and we're all being played and, 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 and it really is time for this to stop. I, I don't know how. I'm open for suggestions. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and until next time, crow your coins and I hope to see you soon.